Germany's shift towards stricter immigration measures is currently making waves in the news, and it's coming after receiving 25% more first-time asylum applicants than last year. The UN is working on new rules to help unburdened countries like Italy, which has one of the largest numbers of immigrants in Europe. There's a very good solution to this problem, but it requires cooperation from all European countries and possibly inviting more countries to join in and share the immigrant load, as the German Chancellor suggests. Chancellor Olaf Scholz recently made an announcement following a meeting with German state leaders. In an effort to streamline the process, new rules have been devised to facilitate deportations. This is a departure from Germany's previous pro-refugee stance under former Chancellor Angela Merkel. It's because Germany had 23,190 refugees seeking asylum in the second quarter of 2023. Germany's case isn't isolated either. It reflects a broader trend unfolding across all of Europe. Italy, for instance, took the lead by proposing a migration plan after getting 10,630 applicants in June 2023. And Italy continues to get more applicants. In fact, they account for 75% of all first-time applicants in the EU. According to Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney, the plan involves redirecting migrants to Albania. In this arrangement, migrants will await the processing of their asylum applications by Italy while they stay in Albania. Meanwhile, the French Senate has been having discussions about a more serious immigration bill. This came after France received 12,475 asylum applicants in June 2023. This is in an effort to tackle their refugee challenge by passing it on, and unsurprisingly, Olaf Scholz made plans of his own. After hours of discussions, the leaders from Germany's 16 states have come up with what they're calling a historic moment. The German leaders are facing a massive challenge with a large number of migrants from around the world, but they've managed to work together at all levels of the state. So what's the historic decision that appears to be changing Germany's past stance? Germany has always been a welcoming country for immigrants and asylum seekers. This is thanks to the policies of former Chancellor Angela Merkel. She provided a safe haven for people in conflict zones and parts of the world devastated by war or famine. But this was never easy on Germany. Germany and Europe are seeing a lot of immigrants fleeing war zones and poverty worldwide as of November 2023. The EU had promised to handle asylum seekers, but it wasn't prepared for the overwhelming rush. So they're left with no choice but to close their doors, one country at a time. In the middle of all this, Olaf Scholz's report highlights a big development. It's a deal for the refugee crisis, but it's different from Germany's previous stance. Germany is planning to cut support for immigrants to make them wait longer before they qualify for healthcare and other social services. The goal is to make Germany less appealing to immigrants. And it's not just Germany that's making this move, because other European countries are also taking similar steps. Italy, in particular, has been dealing with a lot of migration issues. Prime Minister Maloney believes that Italy usually becomes the first stop for migrants. The country received 89,158 arrivals in August 2023 alone, which shows a 115.18% increase as compared to last year. So she's proposing a solution to address this. Instead of migrants staying in Italy once they arrive, they will go to a non-EU country like Albania. The agreement involves Albania allowing Italy to use certain areas of its territory. Italy may also set up facilities to handle undocumented immigrants. These facilities, set to open next year, will be able to host up to 3,000 individuals. While this number seems small compared to the influx of people arriving in Italy, the plan is to process asylum applications within a month. Only one centre will be operational at a time. They're expecting to accommodate 36,000 asylum seekers in Albania annually. But is this all legal? According to the UN, certain rules must be followed in order for Maloney's plan to work and become successful. 
The first requires participating nations to uphold all rights, especially during human rights and refugee conventions. Second, these transfers shouldn't turn into a blame game. The idea is to facilitate a shift for a more balanced and shared commitment among nations. Europe seems pretty keen on shifting refugees elsewhere, and this plan is the first of many more to come. The German Chancellor also made a very interesting point during a meeting. Stay tuned till the end so you don't miss out. France also wants to send away people who might be a big problem for public order. They are also considering making exceptions for those working in jobs where there are not enough people. In other words, people who are willing to be paid the bare minimum. But the United Kingdom intends to send migrants all the way to Rwanda in Africa. Even though British courts said no to this, the government is still challenging the decision. And even if they lose, it looks like there might be more plans to send people away. It seems like Europe's anti-immigration efforts are just getting started. There have even been indications from German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he's open to Italy's arrangement in Albania as the EU tries to control illegal immigration. He asked everyone to keep in mind that Albania will be a member of the EU soon, according to them. This means that they are already talking about how they can solve the challenges and problems within the European family. He also made another statement during a briefing with reporters in Spain. He said that such deals are possible, and they will all look at the possibilities of making them happen very closely. This came after Rome and Albania reached an agreement to establish two reception and detention camps for sea migrants. The briefing took place on the sidelines of a Congress of the Party of European Socialists. Scholz also worked with the heads of Germany's 16 states to agree on a more robust migration policy and new funding initiatives for refugees. Scholz thinks there should absolutely be a clear European approach to problems like this especially for migration policies to address past issues and establish solidarity. This will ensure that countries don't have to face migration challenges in isolation. He also talked about the goal of completing an overhaul of the European Union's asylum, as well as migration rules within the current European Parliament term. Schultz also advocated for the integration of six Western Balkan states, which were promised EU membership two decades ago, to happen soon. He proposed granting new membership opportunities to Moldova, Ukraine and Georgia. The Prime Minister of Italy is known for her nationalist and traditionalist stance. The fact that she talked about the importance of defending the traditional family shows her intentions. She has a desire for Italy to be only for Italians and those born to Italian parents. Not only that, but she's not in favour of illegal immigration either, especially since Italy has one of the highest rates of immigrants within Europe. The government led by Maloney is very traditional, even though she made attempts to project more of a right-wing image. Consider the larger context of the right-wing policies she advocates. It is important to listen to the comments she has made about the decreasing birth rate in Italy. The idea is that a legal migration quota can help European economies by facilitating full integration. Yet, one could argue that it's more responsible for all European nations to handle the crisis together. But the choice is clear. Decline is not the path Italy intends to take. Maloney wants Italians to have more children instead. Yet, she's reserved about immigrants who come, have children, and aren't Italian. How does that make sense? But her leadership has raised concerns within her government, especially about the risk of being only in favour of traditional Italians. Not to mention, her government hasn't made much progress either in the year she's been in power. And despite the promises she made, Italy's birth rate has continued to decline. So why not embrace the 130,000 people who arrived in Italy this year? Here, we have to credit Maloney for asking EU states to collaborate, especially for finding concrete solutions to the immigration problem, like her Albania plan. However, the biggest issue is convincing some member states like Hungary and Poland because they don't usually take part in initiatives like the EU redistribution program. To make matters worse, they all align with Maloney's stance against immigrants. 
Europe is still divided in its response, but at least the European Commission understands the urgency of the matter, as well as how important it is to come up with a solution as one unit. There's no choice other than a united approach to managing the influx of people in Europe. After all, completely shutting their doors to immigrants is not a solution that will sit well with the UN. But what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share and watch some of these videos to learn more.